What's going on, everybody? So I got a little bit of a different one for you all today. This is going to be the ultimate guide to elves and specifically the Lord Elrond elves. We'll talk about the accessibility and which members of the team I would recommend farming, some strengths, weaknesses. To be honest, there's not many. The gear priority, ability priority, and of course, some of the content that they shine in. Spoiler alert, it's basically all of it. <laughs> One of the strongest, if not the strongest team in the game. Let's get into it. So with Lord Elrond's event ending soon, this is one of the most inaccessible teams in the game because it's literally not able to be acquired, even if you're spending money, because you need the legendary event to unlock Lord Elrond. As for the rest of the members of the team, well, there are really, in my opinion, sort of seven different elves that I personally find to be interchangeable and worth farming. And we'll go over which ones fit in which comps later. But that's going to be Elra here, Aladdin, Naramiri, Lamion, Arwen, Legolas, and of course, Lord Elrond himself. But he's not necessarily farmable. There's a few here that are really accessible. Naramiri and Elra here specifically are guild farmable, meaning that they are some of the easiest farms in the game. Legolas is in the arena shop, yet another really, really accessible farm. And then as for Arwen, Eladin, and Lamion, they are all hard nodes, and Eladin and Arwen specifically are going to be 80 energy hard nodes, whereas uh, Lamion's going to be a 60 energy hard node. Well, that turns into 12 energy per and 16 energy per. Meaning that they're not incredibly difficult necessarily, but Eladin and Arwen also are on very, very late hard nodes, meaning that this is really one of the harder teams to acquire because you'll have to farm hard nodes for quite some time and then eventually unlock Lord Elrond as you get the event. But if you are going to farm for the elves, the payoff is extremely high. And despite their inaccessibility, especially in the earlier stages of the game, they are still one of the best free to play options to go for now if we're going to dive into some of their strengths of the elf team we have to start off with lord elrond and honestly i could spend all day in just his kit alone which really fuels this team but i want to talk about two abilities in specific because their healing is unmatched in the game simply because well majorly because of this ability from lord elrond this becomes a two turn cooldown when maxed out as long as you have no elf to revive also granting you protection and regeneration to some of the most wounded squad members but without elves to revive this is a massive heal on a really low cooldown this allows you to constantly fuel up your team and really keep them pushing if there is someone who's dead. Well, guess what? You have the only revive in the entire game, allowing you to bring back one of your strong elves. And then it's still only a four turn cooldown, which is pretty nuts. And then add on top of that, one of the strongest turn meter control abilities in the game and be it on an AOE, giving you a two turn slow, and the ability to strip turn meter up to 30%. This is a crazy ability, and both these add to some of the strongest potential for a single character in the game. But then you start to add on all the other pieces. You have literally the best tank in the entire game, giving himself nimble, allowing you to have an extremely survivable comp. You have potentially double healer in Naramiri and Lord Elrond, which makes it even more rough to get through. And if you want to include some of the pay to win elves that are literally only available through gems at the current moment, well, then you're going to have an even more defensible comp and potentially even higher single target damage. But then you add even more nimble and regeneration and bane cleanse and it just gets insane. You have one of the, if not the most survivable teams, and I would consider them the most survivable team in between healing, regeneration, Bane Cleanse, and tanking, all of it combining to just be an absolute nuisance to deal with in Arena, and also allowing you to survive in PvE. But guess what? 
we talked about their survivability their damage is top notch as well with characters like Elrahir and Lamion and even Lord Elrond himself being in the field you have a ton of very very good DPS being put out specifically single target let's talk about some of the weaknesses which to be honest it's hard to come up with some weaknesses so honestly there's really only one big weakness I would say for the team and that is their AoE damage potential. So if you look at some of the elves I've recommended here, and even the pay to win elves included, you have some really strong single target damage. I already mentioned Lami on Elri here. You have Legolas down here, Orofin. Heck, even Arwen, Naramiri. These characters all do single target DPS. There are two really noticeable AoE abilities with the standard elf comp. And the first one's going to be Eladin's ability. But he's a tank he doesn't really do a ton of damage with this aoe here it is somewhat useful but it's not nearly on the scale of like a strider or a gauze and then of course you have the wrath of rivendell from elrond but this shouldn't really be treated as like an aoe dps skill it does do really good damage but he's not really there to just pump out this ability as you can see um it is a huge cooldown a massive cooldown so it's not going to be repeatedly doing damage so this is probably the biggest weakness of the team and if you really wanted to nitpick which I wouldn't do to any other team in this game but if you really wanted to nitpick for some weakness yes they could use potentially a little bit more Bane cleanse so if you decided not to use like Naramiri you're only relying on really Arwen to get some Bane cleanse and some resistance well that potentially can be a little bit weak uh, in some situations but to be honest that's again nitpicking and that would require you not to necessarily use specific comps but because you have so much variety you have the options to kind of shore up some of the weaknesses which we'll get to a little bit later on except for the aoe potential which really you won't ever get strong aoe out of this team let's talk about gear priority so as i mentioned we're going to focus on seven of the elves today uh, with excluding rumil orphan and lilio because these characters in my opinion Two of them are pay to win and the other one is noticeably weaker than the other ones in terms of the standard elf comp but starting off here i do think lord elrond is going to be one of the highest if not the highest gear priority on your team there's a few reasons for this but because this heal is on such a low cooldown allowing you to get a little bit of extra gear on him to get that heal up to as much health as you possibly can get and more importantly this ability to kind of passively heal your team members with this passive allows you to get even more value out of the gear and then on top of the whole thing you really 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 want lord elrond to survive and oftentimes he's going to be one of the lower star levels on your team because he is forcing you to have all the other elves built up before him so he actually really benefits from extra gear and a lot of you will only have a five or six star lord l run and so the extra gear does help him survive especially in arena scenarios after lord l run though i think there's one really clear option for high gear tier and that is eladin getting high gear on this guy is not only going to help him do quite a bit more damage but give him a lot more effective hp to really become a massive nuisance keep in mind that this ability here right when you start to max it out which we will get to in just a second you're going to be provoking all the time and this means that getting you a little bit more armor a little bit more hp a little bit more ability to survive coupled with the amount of healing coming out he's going to be the second priority after lord elrond after that i would focus on your dps units which means lord our, our elra here here Legolas and Lamion these three are going to be exceptionally good in order for you to buff up and increase the overall DPS of the team I personally would go for Elra here and then Legolas if you do happen to have Legolas nice and built out in my case I have Lamion built out already so I'm going to be going for Lamion uh most likely outside of well if I'm looking to invest into other comps after that then you look towards Arwen, Naramiri, and then if you are going to use Lelio, then Lelio, but Arwen and Naramiri, I personally would go for Arwen over Naramiri just because I find her to be generally in every comp 
uh, whereas Naramiri are in specific comps. But to be honest, Naramiri gets a little bit more value out of the gear because a lot of her abilities are also based on max HP as well. So you're going to get a little bit more value, but Arwen and Naramiri don't get nearly as much value in terms of DPS or being the frontline tank or being the frontline healer for the team. And so gear priority once again goes Lord Elrond first, Elodin, then Elrahir, Lamion, and Legolas because of the DPS, and then Naramiri and Arwen. If you have a seven star Lord Elrond, you might be able to gear Lord Elrond after you gear Elodin and your DPS units. But to be honest, if you have a seven star Lord Elrond, you probably don't really care about gear priority because you could just do it all. <laughs> so um, this is kind of like a non point, but if you do, then maybe you can wait on Lord Elrond because he'll already have the base stats to kind of support him surviving. Now let's talk about ability priority. To be honest, a lot of the elves have really, really strong abilities, but there are five, in my opinion, that are going to be really, really important to focus on in order for you to get that insanely powerful elf comp that you're really looking for. And in order to start us off here, the number one priority to focus on is going to be Elrond's heal. You want to get this to level six in order for you to constantly start regenerating stamina for this ability in order for you to have that two turn cooldown heal. This is what makes the team so obnoxious in so many different scenarios. And in PvE, this is what's going to help you get a ton of points in chapter three. It's going to help you get just overall additional value maybe even pushing to 1.1 million points in chapter one and chapter two uh, this is just what makes the ability the whole elf team survive longer and really tick this is so crucial yes you will not get kind of the value if you're level six and you have to have someone revived but this ability kind of helps you prevent that when you do get it to level six, which helps you overall survive longer. Do not underestimate that one. The second most important one immediately after you get the heal going is going to be Elodin's AOE here, the ancient skill. Why is this so important? Well, you're going to get one stamina for this ability per boon on himself. So let's say you have provoke. Let's say you have um, nimble, which he grants to himself. Let's say he has regeneration, potentially other buffs like deadly, right? You can easily just chain ancient skills back to back to back to back to back. Uh, obviously, most of the time you're looking at like maybe two stamina or maybe three stamina generated from this. That's crazy. This allows you to permanently keep up provoke potentially, or just keep up a really nice stacks of provoke constantly helps you out in chapter three of the raids consistently and arena especially but also just getting the constant aoe's out actually can help out in terms of aoe damage which is one of the weaknesses of this comp but allowing you to kind of shore up that weakness by prioritizing this ability as well the third ability not necessarily an ability in this case a leadership is going to be elrond's lead Yes, it's not as insanely impactful as some of the abilities that you can do. This is just more passive general value across your team, especially when you hit towards level five and level six. And notably level four here, this one allowing you to just grant fortitude, giving you resistance if they have no banes on their turn. This helps, especially on chapter four of the raid, just to kind of avoid some of the banes coming towards you. And even in chapter three and across the whole game, but giving you some extra max HP is going to help out. And there's a little bit of an interesting kind of thing going on with Lord Elrond's lead ability, which is if they have no banes, they can extend the duration of their boons by one turn. And you can see here, um, sorry, one of their boons. And then if you have level six, you get one more boon duration extended, which oftentimes mean things like regeneration, potentially going for random other boons that apply like deadly, potentially provoke. This can really get out of hand really quickly and definitely one that you're going to want to prioritize. The next one is actually going to head on over to Elra here and buff up 
kind of a twofold here, but I kind of include them in their same ability. Although that's not necessarily true because they're technically two separate abilities, but getting his passive up to level six. This is really important because whenever an attack comes in on your Eladin while he's provoking, which is presumably going to be constant, you're going to get a retaliation hit from Elra here. Guaranteed with additional crit damage, that's huge. This is a ton of extra passive damage and is really going to help out on like chapter two and chapter four of the raids, where if they're hitting your provoke, if you know, you're lucky enough for the Balrog to hit your provoke, or if you're in chapter two and they're forced to hit your provoke, you're gonna get a ton of additional damage. And that also means that you kind of want to build up Elrihir's basic as well, because that is the provoke or the retaliate ability that they're using. And you could see 10% additional damage per boon at level six, this is gonna get plus 5% additional damage per boon, which ends up being a total of 10, 210% damage. Plus you get additional damage percentage increasing and crit damage increasing from this passive. So upgrading the basic actually ends up increasing your damage a lot more than it seems because you're getting a ton of multiplicative um, damage scaling from the percentage increase here. And then the crit damage, of course. And then of course you just get a lot of additive scaling from the damage per boons, which ends up being really, really strong. So that's kind of a twofold combo uh, from your Elra here. And the last one, is going to be Lord Alron once again, and that is going to be his Wrath of Rivendell. Um, this is gonna be incredibly important in order to kind of max out. And the reason for it is not necessarily for the damage or the stamina charge, but really for the two turn slow duration. That is incredibly strong in arena specifically. Less so in PvE because, you know, it takes a long time to get back to this ability, but launching this ability can really disrupt enemy teams in arena a ton, right? There's a couple of other ones that I want to mention as well. Things like Eladin's passive here is extremely good because you're going to get that extra nimble on turn chance and extra resistance is always useful, especially for chapter four of the raid and in arena. You know, you have your Legolas and Lamion's just damaging abilities, right? Super, super strong. Definitely worth considering. Of course, Nera Miri's heal, her friend of the forest, and even going up to level five on her purifying, right? Bringing this down to a two turn cooldown to cleanse extra banes. We will get to specific ability upgrades that I want to talk about for specific teams, which we'll talk about after this. Uh, and then, you know, of course, Arwen's just kind of general utility in terms of getting some evening star value up to level six, getting you potential extra regeneration going and her level two or her second ability here, or I guess technically her first true ability getting up to level six is gonna get additional turn meter per boon on self. That is huge because you could potentially cycle this and essentially turn this into kind of a two turn cooldown with this level six up, which can be extremely useful if you're able to manage the boons well. Now, with that said, normally we talk about the strengths or content that they're good in, but to be honest, the elves fit in every piece of content extremely well, if not the best in those pieces of content. So instead, I want to talk about different variations of this team that you can go for and what content that really can shine in. So the first comp to talk about is probably the most generally just solid comp, but has a focus on cleansing and healing and survivability. This is going to particularly help you in chapter three and also chapter four four of the raids and also can be an extremely big nuisance if you're sticking to just the elf team in arena you're not going to get as much value out of chapter one and chapter two having nara miri in the squad because her healing doesn't really need to be there in order for you to kind of get a lot of damage out um, and get the kind of aoe bombers procking but this is going to really really do well in terms of stalling and extra bane cleanse if you're looking for a really, really heavy powerhouse single target DPS team, and perhaps you have enough resistance on your team or Bane Cleansing in Chapter 4, well, you're going to want to roll in with Lamion or Legolas here, okay? Uh, either one in this slot can be very, very solid. I think that Lamion, for PvE purposes, 
can sometimes do a little bit more because you don't need to have that set up and you don't need as much turns to kind of go through and in Legolas's case you kind of want to kill an enemy in order to kind of cycle back in order to get that 100 turn meter going if you're in an arena and you want more single target damage Legolas can be really really good or in a situation where you can benefit like in chapter two or chapter one of the raids you know you can go in hey i'm gonna nuke down a side ad go for the boss again um for that extra 100 turn meter can be really really nice there there's another team comp here that uh, you can really really consider for kind of anywhere but this is more pay to win and that is going to be running rumil or orifin but rumil specifically this is one of the most obnoxious if not the most obnoxious teams in the game because of how survivable it can be and you also have incredible dps coming out from elra here in arena allowing you to kind of just stroll through a lot of the different arena comps uh, you could run orifin in terms of single target damage as well um or kind of just extra value instead of legolas or you know lamion there's also all sorts of different variations that you can run outside of just the elves themselves i've seen people run pippin in this squad although that does pull away from road to rivendell so just keep that in mind offering additional bane cleansing in particular and of course additional healing you can run afa in this team in order for you to run uh just kind of a double provoker ability to really really powerhouse elra here out for any time eladin does not have a provoke up you can run Eowyn in this team for, again, additional Bane Cleanse, a little bit of Might Generation. One of the more common ones I've seen for Arena is going to be your, um, well, I can't show you here because I'm on my light campaign, but fitting in Gauze or Gruher into this for Arena. That gives you some really, really important debuffs from Gru here or the Boon uh, stripping from gauze and aoe damage which comes in handy quite a bit i've even seen halbred in this team for those of you that are really pay to win um and all sorts of different options amr is another fantastic option to have in this comp giving you some additional single target dps especially in like chapter one or chapter two and chapter four of course it does pull away from the AO, uh rohan squad again so i wanted to keep it specifically towards elves at the beginning but there are tons of options that you can run the most general utility comp i would say um is just going to be naramirian here but if you're looking for more dps as i said legolas and lamion are the way to go pretty much every piece of content i would use the elves in and be very very excited to do so even if you're running let's say double healer like this comp is or you're filling in that last slot with like an ammer or whatever you're still probably going to be able to get 900k points minimum as long as you have a decently invested into comp if you compare it to like the rohan or the isengard or like road to rivendell as long as you have an kind of an equivalent investment in this comp as you do those you're probably going to get more equal or if not more points from the elves even if you're not necessarily running the optimized elf comp so you're really going to get a ton of value out of this and do not underestimate them in arena you will need to become prepared for the elves in arena if you're going to use your own elves that's totally fine and you can be done but i generally prefer a little bit more single target dps in order to burst down lord elrond uh, so just keep that in mind so i generally prefer someone like legolas in this slot or ammer whom many of you have built just so I can get in, have a lot of attacks to deal with the unbreakable from Lord Elrond and all the nimble and all the healing and all this nonsense, um, which does help out the team a lot. Or you can run with Gruher to kind of get yourself some uh, dazes out and all sorts of value there, uh, as I said. So those are going to be the kind of recommended, uh, recommended lineups and some considerations to make. But that's going to wrap up the Elf guide hopefully i'll save you all a little bit of resources so you don't just randomly invest uh into some abilities worse than others or potentially just going all out but to be honest out of all the teams in the game if you're going to waste resources on a team it should probably be the elves because the extra value you get from them well they're top tier right now and i even if they do become a little bit of power corrupt 
they're still going to be like number two or number three for the next like year or so. So you should be totally fine in investing in them. Even if it is like a six month process, guess what? He's still going to be number two, number three, somewhere up there and definitely worth going for lots of value for your account. And hopefully you all are able to kind of progress them at a reasonable pace. I know for me, I'm still stuck on some gold. So hopefully that changes. If it does, I'll let you all know, and I will see you all for a video tomorrow.